It's enough to take us home. The devil don't like us singing for Jesus. Bless. That's right. Amen. He don't like us getting loose in the Spirit of God. As a matter of fact, the devil don't like anything about you this morning. That's right. Anything that resembles Christ or Yahweh God our Father, he don't like it. Amen. Amen. Bless. I read where Moses said, Whom shall I tell? The people that had, that sent me, God said, "Tell them I am that I am has sent you." Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. We're here because I am yes. has saved us. Amen. Yes. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. I am is one hundred and ten percent positive. Yes. I am. Amen. Bless. Praise God, praise God. I am with no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Bless. He said, I am. Go tell them that I am has sent you. Amen. Amen. Bless. And we can know the great I am has sent us. We can know that the great I am has sent us uh, to preach, to testify, to say. We can know that beyond the shadow of a doubt. Bless. To teach. We can know that God has sent us. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If y'all don't want to praise the Lord, I will. Yes. Praise God. God is good. All the time. Keep me another week. Keep me another day, another night. And I'm up here once again. Praise God. I'm in God's house. Yes. With God's people singing God's songs. Worshiping the great God of heaven and earth. Amen. I don't give credit to anybody or anything today but God our Father. Yes. In the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Praise God. Let's read starting at verse number 9. Praise God. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness he led him about. He instructed him he kept him as the apple of his eye. And I want to speak to you a few moments on the apple of his eye. The apple of God's eye. Yes. Can we find favor with God? Can we be a friend of God like Abraham? Can we be a dreamer like Joseph? Huh? Can we be a mighty man of strength like Samson? Can we be a hornblower like Gideon? Huh? Can we be a slingshot expert like little David? Huh? Can we slay a giant like Abishai? Huh? Can we? Can we prophesy like Isaiah? Can we? Yes. Amen. Can we say, Sun stand still, moon be not removed, like Joshua? Yes. Amen. Can we raise our hands in the battle as one? Yes. Sometimes they're heavy. We need Aaron and her to get on one side and one on the other. Yes. Hold our hands up. Amen. Yes. We can do all things through Christ. Yes. Who strengthened us. Yes. Yes. I looked up the, the saying, the apple of his eye. It means something or someone that you cherish above all others. The apple of your eye. The original Hebrew for this saying was I-Y-S-H-O-W-N. I think it's Ishon. Ishon. You know Hebrew? That's, that's right. Ishon. 
A-Y-I-N, iron. I think that's it, iron. It means or can be translated as the little man of the eye. <laughs> little man of the eye. It's a reference to the tiny reflection that you can see of yourself in someone else's pupil or eye. Did you know that? You ever seen that? On a, on a Sunday, I've seen my own self in the pupil of somebody's eye. And you're, you're little, you know? That's what the apple of the eye relates to. The little man in someone else's eye. God that will punish us for our disobedience. But we deserve, we need punishment uh, for our disobedience to bring us back. Well, we need chastening sometime from God. Amen. To get us in line and get us straight. Well, he loves us. We're the apple of his eye. So we have to do things sometime to keep us in line. Well, Amen. Israel was a mighty holy nation. Especially when they had kings that were holy and mighty. There was no mightier king that ever lived than King David. And he loved God. Yes, he became disobedient at times. But you know what David did when God reproved him? David said, let me not fall in the hands of man, but let me fall in the hands of God. For great is his mercy. Amen. And God punished him for his iniquity. But he said, let me fall in the hands of God. Amen. That's where we're at. Bless. We're the apple of his eye. He's got us in his hand looking at us like this. His mighty hand. He's got us in his hand and he looks at you, Robert. And you're hit the apple of his eye, Robin. Amen. Tara, all of you. He, he's got you in his hand and he's looking at you. And, and I want to be able to say, I see my reflection in God's eye. Amen. I want to be like him. I want people to see God through me and in me. I want the reflection of God to be through me and in me. Bless. Amen. Yes. This apple of God's eye was a mighty kingdom. It brought down nation after nation and empire after empire through leaders like Joshua. Amen. Uh, Moses and Joshua and, and David. And even Saul at times. Bless. Mighty God was, mighty, mighty fortress is our God. Bless. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is a mighty fortress. God, God is a mighty fortress. Say, wait a minute. God is my mighty fortress. God is my mighty fortress. Yes, he is. yes, he is. We are precious in the sight of God. Bless. Amen. We're not just some fly-by-night floozy people that, that decided to choose another religion. Amen. And another following and another thought or idea. Amen. We are God. We belong to Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Satan tried to get at God's people in the Old Testament just like today. He done his best. He came along and poked his finger in God's eye when he was messing with the children of Israel down in Egypt. And you know what God done? God brought judgment upon Egypt and Egypt was spoiled. Great riches left when the children of Israel, after the ten plagues, the children of Israel left out. They were giving them money, giving them jewels and gold to get out of here. Here, take this. We want you to leave. Amen. 
and they left. And you know, Pharaoh did not learn the first time when he poked his finger in God's eye. So he done it again. He said, I'm gonna kill him down by the Red Sea. Amen. And he came and you know what happened? The waters parted. The children of Israel went over on dry land. God, they were in the hand of God. Bless. Amen. And when, when Pharaoh saw them going over, amen, he proceeded to do the same. And God brought them over with his hand. And when his hand got out of the water, he pulled it out. That water came down mightily and destroyed Pharaoh and his vast mighty army. The mightiest army in the world that existed that day. God destroyed it with one big old clap of water. Amen. You don't mess with the apple of God's eye. With Goliath. God had God angry. Amen. When he stuck his finger in the eye of God with little David. He said, you come to me with a sling and a stone. I'm going to give your body to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Yes, he did. And what did God say? Uh uh. David is the apple of my eye. Bless. David is the apple of my eye. You can't mess with him. And little David said, You come to me with spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Bless. And David said, This day, David said, This day, I'm going to give your body. It's a bigger feast. Little David's body wouldn't have been much of a feast for the buzzards. But David said, this day I'm going to give your body to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. There'll be enough left if you want to feed the fish too. Amen. Because Goliath, you're 10 feet tall and you're bigger. You beat everybody on the block. Everybody's afraid of you but me, little, little David. Me, I'm not afraid of you because I'm the apple of God's eye. Hey Amen. If you mess with me, you stuck your finger in the eye of God. And judgment is coming, boy. And he took the stone and he slung it. Amen. And he slew the giant, cut his head off. Why? Because he that touches you touches. The apple of God's eye. Bless. There was a king called Sennacherib from Syria, of Syria. He came down to fight against Hezekiah. And he boasted against God. He boasted against Hezekiah. He said, he, he told Hezekiah, listen now, I've got all the gods of all the other nations I've destroyed. I've got their idol gods and I put them, I brought them home with me. I got them set up there. Uh, all their gods are subject to me. Hezekiah, what did he do? He went in and he prayed, verse. He told Isaiah about it. He prayed. What am I going to do? And Isaiah, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah and told, told, told him what to do. Right. Not fear this host. Don't fear these people. And that night, the angel of the Lord came by and destroyed 185,000 soldiers of Assyria. The next morning, there was 185 dead corpses in the camp of Syria. And what did Sennacherib do? He ran just as hard as he could back home. He thought maybe, well, I, I, I need to go talk to my God. He went into the idol, his God, Nisroch, and he prayed to his God. And while he was praying, God sent judgment. His own two sons came and cut his head off. Why? Because he stuck his finger in God's eye. Bless. I want you to notice that God finds his people, the apple of his eye, and he prepares them. He gets them prepared for what's ahead. There's a scripture that says, Right here, if I can find it, Romans 2. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. 
But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that which is in the heart and in the spirit, not of the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Not of the letter, not just the, not just the written word, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Yes. For he has given us the spirit of God, because we're the apple of his eye, and he loves us. And he says, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost in the last day. And on the day of Pentecost, he sent the former rain. And it fell about 2,000 years ago. And it began falling once again at Azusa Street in America uh, around the early 19th century. Uh, I, I think around 1900. It began to fall. The Holy Ghost once again began to fall. Amen. The latter rain. The former fell then, the latter fell now. And he's still falling upon those that believe in the Holy Ghost of God, the Holy Ghost in fire. Amen. He's giving the Holy Ghost to the apples of his eye. Those that he loves, amen. Those that said, yes, Father, I believe Jesus died for me. And I want to serve you, Lord. You are the great I am. You are coming back soon. I believe every word in this book. He's preparing the church even now. Was God preparing the church, Brother Theodore, only when John the Revelator wrote to the seven churches? Was that the only preparation needed? Like someone said, it looks to me like two out of every seven people in the church may make it. Because there was two churches that were good. Five out of seven need to repent and get their first love or repent. Or, you know, five out of seven, you read it. It's two churches out of seven were pleasing God. So we need to be at least the two out of seven. I won! And we all say, I won! Well, if we're all the apple of God's eye, we need the Holy Ghost to move in these last days. We need the Holy Ghost. When I, when I had my children, I didn't have them, when Robin had my children, <laughs> each one was the apple of my eye. My four kids were the apples of my eye. Yes, they were. That simply meant that I was, we were watching over them like hawks. Upon their little chicklets, you know. We provided for them. I went out and provided for my kids. I didn't let them go hungry. I don't believe they ever went hungry. If they got a little munchy, they would go to the refrigerator anytime they want to. I didn't have a limit on some people. No cookies in the after supper. I had milk and cookies and cakes there. Anytime you get hungry, children, there it is. I did. That's right, my kids. I never took them to get all those diphtheria shots and polio shots and all kind of shots. And You know, it don't make any sense to me. Go get a, a flu shot and you ain't got the flu. Go get it and you get sick. Amen. If that's the case, you might get snake bit in your life. Go on and get it done now. Get your yearly snake bite. Take, well, that's it for the year. I'm good to go to next year. That old snake can't sneak up on me now. I've already got mine. And yet we, we go vaccinate our children like cattle. But I never did give, I never did let my kids take one shot. But they come by and they hitch the law. Didn't they? It's the law. You got to give your children shots. It's the law. There's never been a law written that you have to. You can look high and low and search. There is never a law written by Congress, Senate, 
or anybody that it's a law to require to give your kids shots to go to school. And mine went. Mine were hardly ever sick. The Lord blessed them. They had all the cookies and milk they wanted. And all the moon pies or whatever. And they were the apples of my eye. I made sure I done my best to protect them. If anybody would have come and touched them, they would be sticking their finger in my eye. And I don't allow people to stick their finger in my eye. Do you? Amen. I've had people to point at me before and I said, get that out of my face, you know. It's getting too close to my eye. Get that out of my face, please. Amen. That's God with me and you, Brother Tony. Amen. People start messing with you. They start pointing at God. Jesus said, it's not you they hate, but it's me. Amen. They, they start getting close to you. They, they messing around with God. They messing around with Jesus, our big brother. Amen. You don't mess around with, with Jesus. You don't mess around with, with his little brothers and sisters. You don't mess around with them. Amen. Because you're touching the apple of your eye. And it ain't going to work. You don't mess with my kids. Amen. You can mess with me, but don't mess with my heifer. Samson said, if you're not a plow with my heifer, you wouldn't have known the riddle. Don't go plowing with my heifer. And don't go messing with the apple of my eyes. Don't mess with them. Because I will defend them. Amen. Do you see the picture? I remember there was a, a Doberman picture. When me and Tara was walking like this, she was little, about that big. And we were walking. Doberman picture was just snarling, coming this way at her. Looked like he's looking right at her. I grabbed her up, put her in this arm, and I went toward that dog. Just automatically. I didn't run. I didn't turn. I turned toward the dog. I was ready to kill him if I could with my bare hands because I was he was messing with the apple of my eye. Amen. 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 You don't go messing with God's people. Right. You hear what I'm saying? The Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Leave them alone. Amen. You better leave God's people alone. If these people boasting against Israel, they better leave them alone. Yes. You better pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Right. You better pray for Benjamin Netanyahu. You better pray for him. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't mess with God's people. Yes. I'm one of the Lord's anointed. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Don't mess with me. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. No weapon formed against me going to prosper. Yes. God said, fear not, I'm with you, be not dismayed. I am thy God, I will keep thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Last. He said, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand the right hand, it shall not come nigh thee. Last. Hallelujah. Last. I am the apple of God's eye. I say it. Last. You might think... I know you want to form a small opinion of yourself. That's only natural. In God's people, we don't think of ourselves above that we ought to think. We're not high-minded thinking we're better than anybody. Amen. We don't think we're better than somebody else, but I have had religious people thinking they were a lot better than me. And they try to make you feel like you're inferior to them. Amen. They walk around smug thinking they're God's personification of, of holiness. They're the next thing to Jesus Christ. Amen. But I don't care what they think of me. It's what God knows about me. We are the church of the living God. Yes. Amen. We are a chosen generation. A royal nation. Huh? Royal priesthood. And holy nation. 
We're peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of Him. That's why we're peculiar. We're weird. When, when, when things come badly, we say, Lord, we thank you. We give praise and glory to you. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. We don't understand it, but we know our God. And we are the apple of his eye. Lord, I want to be able to look in your eye and see my reflection one day. When I get over to heaven, in the heaven, amen, and see Jesus, Mom, I want to be able to walk up uh, or, or kneel down before him and he looked down and I can see my reflection in the great big eyes of God. I want to be able to see my reflection in his eyes. And I dare say the sinner, the lost, the ungodly will never see their reflection in the eyes of God. They will be ashamed to look at God. He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I'm glad I'm not ashamed of him today. And we're going to be put to the test sooner or later, whether we're ashamed of him or not. I remember first got saved, the devil didn't want me to ask the blessing in front of him. Y'all ever get that sort of feeling, you know, people are looking, what you going to do? You ever got that? Anybody? Want you to sort of be ashamed. So you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody ever done that? Anybody ever done it? Bless. Well, I have. First God Somebody say, you ought to owe you the nose. Anybody ever done it? I'm the only guilty one. Me and Brother Theodore were in the same boat. Prince, first you raise your hand, son. That's <laughs> great. Now God don't want us to get in front of a bunch of people and say, <clears throat> Our Father, we thank Thee for this abundance we have before us. Looking around. God don't want us to get anybody reflecting us. But we humbly we bow our heads and say, Lord, we thank You for what You've given us. We're truthful and honest because we are the apple of his eye. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Lord, we're the apple of your eye. And anybody touches us, is touching the apple of your eye. Hallelujah, look at Robert holding that little boy. Look, that's the apple of his eye. And he said, little, you can see the whole reflection of him in there, can you? You can see the little man in the eye, can't you? Huh? Look how little he is. Praise God. Is that him grunting? He's the apple of your eye. Robert's grinning from ear to ear always. Look at him. Got that little baby. Man, I would too. I grinned. Almost lose a coat hanger and you grin, you know. <laughs> Had Tara, Princess, Terry, and Candy. They were the apple of mine, and they still are. Don't you go messing with them either now. He that toucheth Israel, toucheth the apple of his eye. And this last days we're living is going to be totally and entirely situated around Israel. We as Christians need to become focused on that. We know it's turning toward Israel now for the last of the last days. And we as Christians need to do like Jesus said. We need to bless and pray for Israel. Because they are part of us. We're he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, but the hidden man of the heart. We are Jews. Inwardly, we're Jews. We're, we're children of Abraham because we believe what Abraham believed. Bless. Abraham was looking for a city. And we're looking for a city. Bless. Amen. Moses said, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up 
Like unto me, him shall you hear. And Jesus was raised up. That's him. Bless. And we believe it tonight, this morning. We believe it. Bless. So therefore, we are the apple of God's eye. And nobody messes with Israel in our sight. So if anybody comes against them, we're against that. Amen. Bless. Aren't you glad today that you know that you're the apple of God's eye? Bless. No matter what comes or goes in your life, God knows everything and knows the reason it's in your life. And all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Right? All things work together for good. Sister Jenny was so worried before she had that baby. But now the grin's on her face. Huh? Look at her. She's grinning as big as the joker. She is. Why? Because the apple of the eye. God looks at us, Brother Tony, as he look as they look upon that little baby. Amen. God looks upon us. Amen. We're the apple of his eye. It's those little things that God loves and adores about us. Our nature, the, the way we the way we love people, the way we treat people. Amen. We are the apple of God's eye today. Amen. And it's an honor and a glory and a privilege to be able to say, Lord, I'm the apple of your eye. And not boastingly, not bragging, don't you mess with me. I've heard people say, you better not mess with me. Something will come on you. I've heard people, you, you I told you so. You mess with me, God's going to get you. That ain't God. <laughs> Amen. That's not God. We should be blessing them to curse us. Amen. Pray for them to despitefully use us and persecute us. Yeah. Say all manner of evil against us falsely. He said rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Instead of rejoicing when somebody talks bad about us, we get pouty. Lord, get us. Show them. Teach them a lesson. Lord. Bring them down. Because they offended us. Yes, Yet we should be praying. We're the apple of God's eye. And he said pray for them. Help them Lord. Pray for your enemy. Amen. We're the apple of God's eye. So don't go poking your finger toward me. You liable to hit God right in the eye with it. Amen. Ain't God good? All the time. Praise the Lord.